welcome back to the Paxton Creek Garden. If you are new to our channel, please uh, click the subscribe button and also press the bell icon. That way you get our regular updates. And it's been a week, uh, so uh, let me show you my garden and what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna harvest some coriander today. Um, it's gonna be rainy and stormy this afternoon, so I'm kinda keen to harvest some. So let's get started. So here in the side section, we got a lot of uh, these marigolds growing with that. We have three zucchinis growing beautiful, beautiful. Um, and we got three of the cherry tomato variety here. And uh, planning to tie them up to my deck, so they are growing beautiful. This section is doing real great. We got three types of things, marigold, tomatoes, and zucchini. Here we got some marigolds. They are about to start blossoming, you know, in the container. And then once they start, I'll be putting them out uh, up on the front uh, porch. And here is the friendly soldier rug. Uh, so I'm glad to see them as well. And here are the periwinkas, they're still trying to get bigger, <laughs> I guess it needs the hot weather. And here is the beautiful lush green um, cilantro that we're gonna harvest. Beautiful, beautiful. You can wait to harvest but <clears throat> I'm gonna have a big storm here for a couple of days and it's gonna start this afternoon, maybe half an hour or so from the time I'm filming this video. So I'm gonna have to harvest them. I don't want them to go to vest. So, um, and here are the Amis pest, uh, pest tomato variety. Doing beautiful. I'm finally starting to see the first flower set that's starting to appear on all of them pretty much. This one uh, has a two on this side. I don't know if you can see it. This one has a tear, so all three in the container are blossoming. And here is how I planted my tomatoes this year, you know. I planted the tomato in the center, then I got the marigold, and then around that I got the garlic. And, you know, garlic, we harvest them as green leaves just for these leaves. So, it should be good. Um, and I'll just, what I'll do when I harvest the uh, leaves, I'll just har harvest it from maybe inch up so it'll keep growing and maybe from above too so we'll see uh, so what the garlic and the marigold helps uh, tomato with is the, they keep pests out and uh, you know uh, the marigold also helps with uh, tomato flavors I think uh, I heard from a lot of people that it makes tomato sweeter and tastier so that's how I have planted it and here we got uh, the Another variety called um, where is the board? Um, here is San Marzano, and the other one was Amis. So the San Marzano is doing well too. You know, there. So we got three plants in container. All three are great. Again, we got marigold and the garlic around it. You know, and. Uh, then here we have two Roma tomato plants, Roma tomato plants, which I started in the basement and I started a long time ago so they are bigger. But I still got marigold underneath here. Same thing with this the other one and you know same thing we got garlic here. So I got about four or five garlic cloves around the tomato here plant and also we got the first flowers. Now it'll take some time, maybe a week or two, to get get the flower blossoms. Uh, but they are starting to flower, so I'm glad. All in all, all the containers are doing real great and real well. And here we had some spinach. I just removed them this week, and we got marigold and two black beauty eggplants. Now because we had the spinach growing, this didn't grow as well as they are in the raised bed I'll show you later uh, but uh, this didn't grow as well but now that we have cleared the area this should pick up 
Uh, I have this wool interplant. I don't know if it's a cucumber or a melon. So we'll see. Uh, if it's a cucumber, I'll just twill this then up on my deck. You can see the net I got going along my deck, and that will help me twill a lot of these cucumbers. You know, and here in this raised bed section, you can see I got a lot more things growing and. The first thing we planted were these peas, and uh, they have finally started to put out the blossoms. Um, pretty much every pea plant has blossoms on it, and so soon they'll be starting to grow pea pods. There are cucumbers in here, which are doing well, trying to come out of shadows formed by pea, and then hopefully we can trellis them up here on this night. And then yellow summer squats we got here, two plants. Um, then we have marigold, amaranth in between. And we have some garlic, you know, garlic um, helps with the pest as well and just make use of these little areas, you know. And we got some cucumber, more cucumbers in here hiding in the pea. Um, now the cucumbers will pick up as the temperatures are getting warmer and some more marigold garlics, amaranth, here is the lemon cucumber variety. Um, hopefully it will pick up as the temperatures are warming. Now here I had a summer squash that died and I had to replace it with the cucumber. I believe this is English cucumber variety, so we'll see. And uh, you know, garlic we got again. And uh, more amaranth and uh, cucumber plants in this bed. And so you can see the net, I'll just start to trellis it up on my deck. And here are some more amaranth and uh, some more squats in the middle. And amaranth is doing real beautiful if you look at this patch, you know, from here. Um, that should be enough <laughs> for the family of five for uh, dinner. And here are the trays that we prepared for the garlic. Um, and garlic again, buy it from Sam's Club or something like that where they are already starting to sprout. Um, I tried the garlic from Costco and it didn't grow. Um, so buy it from Sam's Club if you have a membership. Um, I've been growing from Sam's Club for the last three years. This year I tried to plant it from Costco, bought garlic and it didn't grow. So I finally got the Sam's Club one and it started to grow. And here are some more tomatoes. I don't have uh, the uh, marigold in here with me because I ran out of the plants. But these are better boy variety. This year I have planted them in the container like this. But I, you can see I planted garlic in here. And that should help out somewhat with the pest. Uh, here is garlic on the other one. And uh, here is the eggplant. The black beauty eggplant is growing real well. Um, has start kind of keeping away because this is inside the container and uh, far away from all my rest beds and I also got the garlic in here uh, from the beginning and here are some pepper plants and bell peppers are already starting but then we, I had a period where a lot of flowers kind of dropped uh, maybe because of overwatering or transplant shock so only one is formed here same thing with this one here you know I think they had a real bad transplant shock and uh, I had a lot of flower drop and only one uh, paper survived and it's getting bigger day by day um, and it's still recovering you know new leaves are coming out I just had uh, some Epsom salt uh, this morning because it's gonna rain so I just put down some Epsom salt and that should help with their growth and uh, help with uh, them to take more nutrition from the soil because it's magnesium sulfate you know so it, will, it should help and you know you can see the leaves are like this maybe it was over fertilized or something for real bad transplant shock one of the reasons but uh, in a week or two it should start to get better uh, and then we should have good uh, fruit setting on that here we got uh, holy basil and some garlic cloves. You know, I'm trying to <coughs> I'm trying to make use of every square inch that I got. 
and here is the another basic variety here um, that's growing uh, I throw some seeds and every seed pretty much germinated and then I think squirrel did this mess up here um, or, or the bunny that comes by and here is another plant uh, of holy basil uh, real well we keep this or winter in the house under the light did really good there are three plants in that container and they did real good surviving the whole winter under the light and uh, I'm keeping the, I'm planning to do the same thing this year um, look at that beautiful plant I mean. and here are our raised beds uh, looking beautiful beautiful one has eggplant and cucumbers and garlic the other one has peppers, tomatoes, and garlic. So let's get into it. And you can see I had to close the fence because um, the rabbit bunny was being really uh, uh, naughty and messing up the planting. And I think it's the bird also because even after doing this, you can see there is some damage. So I think it's bunny and the birds both. So cucumbers are growing well overall, you know, and I got a row of cucumber. Remember I showed you that I planted them in the row, so even under that uh, little uh, straw there is cucumber. So we should have something real good and we'll trellis it up here and then I'll install a couple poles up here. So we'll have good height where it can trellis and the rest can come down this way. Um, that's what I'm planning and with the eggplants these are the round variety um, Indian eggplants that I grow every year pretty much and all of them are doing real well uh, so far I have seen uh, flea fleas um, uh, the small black colored uh, bug that try to eat your eggplant and create little holes uh, I don't know if you can see it in here but um, they're real tiny holes that it creates and if you don't treat them before ahead of the time you know it will destroy your eggplants and uh, eggplant will waste real bad real energy to try to recover from that and it will affect the fruit setting and stuff like that so for that what I do is I use spinach sod and uh, neem oil so every f every week or 15 days uh, you know once I do spinach sod sprays and the other week I do neem oil sprays and that seems to keep them away I also had a lot of aphid attack uh, in the paper so I did the neem oil spray and uh, I think that's what also affected the bell peppers over there, um, why they are not going well. Because I did real strong spray of uh, neem oil and uh, that seemed to have caused some burn. So here is the flea bug, you know, you can see that little tiny black bug creating real little holes. And so to, you know, in this leaf you can see it. And these are the black beauty eggplant, I got two of them here. And the rest of them are the round black eggplants. Yeah. Um, but you really want to control this flea bug. The other thing you will see soon uh, as the season um, gets warmer um, is the potato bug. And that one just eats the leaves like uh, how it is here. You know, it tries to distort the leaf and tries to eat them. I don't know if this one is done by the potato bug, but they will start to appear soon and you can see them. Uh, so with spinach sword, you can control them as well. And uh, then the Japanese beetle too. Now there are people who say Japanese beetle can't be killed by the spinach sword, but um, you know, Captain Jack's dead brew is spinach sword and they say it can kill the um, Japanese beetle and potato beetle and the flea beetle. So um, these are the three main pests that you want to look out for. And uh, I'll show you once they start to appear. But uh, and here are the garlics. You know you can see them here, there. So every corner I planted garlic. Here are some that are just coming out of here, out of the ground. You know these ones and garlic will also help with keeping the pests away 
in the eggplants. So I, I recommend planting garlic. And here is the flea beetle. If you don't want to know what a flea beetle looks like, I'm gonna try to focus. And that's your flea beetle. So you wanna definitely keep an eye on eye on it and uh, spray neem oil or spinach oil. Um, and here are the paper plants. There's a voluntary tomato plant. I believe this is better boy plant because last year we had better boy here. Um, so with papers we got uh, a lot of red, cap uh, red uh, bell pepper, yellow, orange, and uh, we got a giant bell over there. Um, and then we also got poblano paper. I believe this is poblano paper plant here. Uh, doing real great. Um, finally, I can see the flower buds and it's setting. And, you know, hopefully we'll soon see uh, papers getting formed. I think uh, the other day I saw one of them up here, a real tiny one. I don't know if you can see it. Try to show you in here by zooming in. You see that little tiny belt? Uh, I think it's Pablano paper, or maybe it's something else. But I, I think I saw Pablano paper sheets, so <laughs> it should be that. But on the picture, they were supposed to be green, and this is a little, uh, little parrot color. So I'll see what it ends up growing and uh, keep you up to date. And, uh, here, these three tomatoes are the cherry sun honey gold tomato. That's the hybrid variety from Burpees and had really good reviews. And it's the new variety. I think they had it for last two years or something. Um, so it's growing real good. You know, has put out a nice set of leaves and everything. And you can see the stems are pretty green um, and real nice. So. And on the corner, we got the better boys, two of them. And here is this San Marzano, and the other one is the heirloom Amish pest variety. And the corner one isn't doing real well, but I finally see it put out some new leaves. So that's the cherry one that I showed you earlier. I planted one here. So if you don't do real good, I'm gonna transplant these better boy up here and uh, that will solve my issue. <laughs> so all in all, raised beds are also doing real good and you should have good eggplants, cucumbers, bell peppers and tomato and garlic harvest this year from these raised, two raised beds. And back to this. <laughs> now let me show you my mint. Mint is doing real good. Um, you know, real good mint. I've been drinking mint tea. Except this year, there are a lot of leaves that are getting this. I think that's fungus or some, some kind of bacteria growing on it. Or um, I have to do some research on it. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but uh, it seems to have taken over this little patch here. This side, it's somewhat okay, but there are some leaves that are getting it. Um, there are a couple of marigold here and uh, then we got the lemongrass uh, seem to be doing okay and uh, it would, I think in August or September it will be big enough to harvest and here are our elephant ears this one these two are about to die I think it might put out a new set of leaves but we'll see we are keep watering it this one is doing real well. It put out the new leaf and uh, it will grow big as we fertilize it. Uh, this one is okay. All of these seem to be doing okay enough. And uh, you know, they will start to put out more leaves as we start to fertilize. Uh, we fertilize once since we planted them. Uh, just a miracle grow, nothing fancy. So soon in July you will see, or even at the end of June, you will see this area filled up with elephant ear leaves. <laughs> uh, blueberries again, uh, not doing so well. You know, um, 
these blueberries, most of them are eaten by birds and the plant is so small because it's not not. We don't get more than four hours sun in this area. So it's really idle for elephant ears and mint, uh, but it's not good for blueberry or roses. You know, roses are not growing well either. Um, these flower plants are doing well. They grow every year. I just planted them one year, so I'm thinking that to plant in this little pond that we got have in the back where we just have a cattail, I'm thinking to plant this type of uh, flowers. And that is it folks, that sums up our tour of the Paxton Creek Garden. Thank you for watching and now we'll harvest uh, the cilantro. So let's get down there and harvest some. So here we are. So before you harvest, you know, you got all these, uh, you know, bugs. This is a friendly bug here. Uh, looks like a, some kind of ladybug. Not the red one though. So you just want to give it a little shake. So the ants and other bugs get away. And you don't end up taking them with you in your home. And then once you do that. So. I just change the mode <laughs> so it might look smaller. So you, you just harvest, uh, yeah, you just leave about an inch or two down and it starts cutting. That way you can take a second harvest off of it. And the fresh leaves smell so delicious that you just want to eat them raw. <laughs> so. Well good. I think everybody will be so glad we planted them this year. And they germinated. I think every year what I end up doing is planting them around the summer and they don't germinate as well. Not a single leaf germinates. This is the first year I successfully grown. Look at that, that's just from one container, so it should last me a week, and within a week, this should also start to pick up, and this is the real wheel, and this is the harvest, you know, the other one was the zoomed out view. this is the regular lens, so it should be good enough for a week, and I have two, this one too, I'm gonna harvest that one too, so. So here we go, we're going to harvest this one so well, then leaving two to three inches from the bottom. That way they will have a chance to regrow. You can do that for two to three times, I think. Most gardeners would say. And uh, since I'm doing this for first time in this garden here, I've grown them before, but not here. So we'll see. Because they get affected by temperature a lot. So if it starts to get warm, you know, you're not gonna have that kind of crazy leaves. And it, it will start to bolt at some point to put out the coriander seeds. So. You have to make sure that you place them in the shed and everything. Look at that beautiful harvest. I'll show you inside the home, you know, both of them together. So look at this beautiful harvest out of the two containers we got. And beautiful, beautiful harvest. Should last about two, three weeks, I guarantee. And it's so fresh. The smell is just everywhere in the room. You know, and if somebody just walk by the front door, they'll know you got the fresh cilantro in your home. So always grow your cilantro in summer and um, real good health benefit it has. So that is it, folks, for today's Paxton Creek Garden Tour. Thank you so much for um, visiting our channel. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please click subscribe button and also press the bell icon. And if you like the video, also press the like button. 
and share it with your family and friends. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye.